Today in the workshop, we'll be measuring temperature with the Arduino. I'll show you how to hook up and use five different temperature sensors. Things are really heating up today, so welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop and today in the DroneBot workshop we are going to be looking at a number of different sensors that can help us measure temperature. Now of course measuring temperature is a very common application. We use it in our lives every day. When we get up in the morning usually one of the first things we want to find out is what's the temperature outside. We also want to know what the temperature is inside our homes, whether we need to raise it or lower it to make ourselves more comfortable. If we're cooking something, naturally we need to know about the temperature in our oven. And if we're not feeling well, then we need to know our own human body temperature. Well, today we are going to take a look at a number of different sensors that we can use with the Arduino in order to measure temperature. Now, these sensors differ in the range of temperatures they can measure, in their accuracy, and also in the method that they communicate their data back to the Arduino. So let's go and take a look at these temperatures sensors right now and then we will start writing some code for them and see them work with the Arduino. Now here are the temperature sensors that we're going to be working with today. Now from left to right we have the DHT22 which you're probably familiar with from many of the other projects we've done. This has a digital output. Next to it we have something that looks a lot like a smaller version of it. This is the AM2320 and it has an I2C output and both it and the DHT22 can also measure humidity. Now over here we have two devices that look like transistors. This one is the TMP36 and this one over here is the LM35 and these both have analog outputs. And finally over here we have a module, the MCP9808 from Adafruit and this one has an I2C output. And so now let's go and work with each of these temperature sensors. Now the first sensor we're going to look at today is the familiar DHT22. It's a sensor we've used many times here in the workshop and other projects. This is a commonly available and very inexpensive sensor that can measure both temperature and humidity. The DHT22 is a temperature and humidity sensor. It has a range of negative 40 to positive 80 degrees Celsius. The DHT22 is an accuracy that is within 5%. It can operate on voltages between 3 and 5 volts. The maximum sample rate of the DHT22 is half a hertz, which means it can be sampled at most once every 2 seconds. This is an improved version of the popular DHT11. The DHT22 is also packaged as the AM2302. In fact, that's the device I'll be using today. Pin 1 of the DHT22 is the VCC or voltage connection. Pin 2 is the data output. Pin 3 is not connected. And pin 4 is the ground. Here's how we'll hook the DHT22 up to an Arduino. The 5 volt output of the Arduino will go to pin 1 of the DHT22. Digital I.O. pin 2 will go to the DHT22's output on pin 2. In actual fact, you could use any I.O. pin as it's not critical. And finally, the ground from the Arduino will be connected to pin 4, which is the ground on the temperature sensor. So now let's look at some code we can use with the DHT22. To simplify working with the DHT22, we are going to install a couple of libraries. Go into Sketch, and go into Include Library, and then go to Manage Libraries. This will open the Library Manager. We are going to be looking for the Adafruit DHT Sensor Library, so go into the search box and type in DHT, and press Enter. The DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit is what you want to install. Now, I've already installed mine, but if you haven't installed it, you'll have a button over here to install the library. Now, this library, like many of the Adafruit Sensor Libraries, is dependent upon the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. So you need to install that as well. So type in Unified Sensor. 
and press enter. Now scroll down the list and you'll find the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. You'll need to install this one as well. After you do that, you may close your library manager. We're going to use one of the example sketches to demonstrate the DHT22. So go into Examples and scroll down to Examples from Custom Libraries and go to DHT Sensor Library. We'll run the DHT Unified Sensor Sketch. Now this is the DHT Unified Sensor Sketch. It starts off by including the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library as well as the DHT libraries. We then define the pin that we have connected our sensor to. In our case, it is pin 2, so if you've used a different pin, you can just change this number here. Then we need to uncomment one of these lines to define the type of sensor we're using because this can handle a DHT11, DHT22, and DHT21. It's already been uncommented here for the DHT22, so DHT type has been assigned the value DHT22. Then we create an object called DHT, which we pass the DHT pin and the DHT type to. We also define an unsigned 32-bit integer for a delay in milliseconds that we'll be using. Now in this setup, we initialize a serial monitor and then the DHT sensor. Then after that, we print a number of things. Now you'll notice the letter F over here. This is because we are printing out of flash RAM, which is where the sensor is dumping its data. Now we print a number of parameters for both temperature and for humidity, which we get from the sensor itself. Using those parameters, we get a parameter called sensor minimum delay, which we use to set our delay in milliseconds. Now we go into the loop. We apply the delay, and then we go and get the temperature as an event, and we print its value. So we'll print the value down over here. If it does not initialize, if is not a number event temperature, then we'll say that we have an error in reading it. But otherwise, we'll print the temperature, we'll leave a space, and then we'll put degrees Celsius, because that's what the temperature is going to be printed in. We'll also go ahead and print the humidity. And so now that you've seen the example sketch, let's give it a quick run and see what the temperature and humidity in the workshop is. All right, I'm running my DHT22 experiment, and as you can see, it's already displaying on the serial monitor. Let me just reset that so you can see the sequence it goes through at the beginning on the setup. And there you go, it identifies both the humidity and temperature specifications for the device and it's reading the temperature. Now, I don't have any calibrated source of temperature for any of today's measurements, so the only thing I can go by is the clock on my wall, which is probably using something as accurate as a DHT22, but it tells me right now, for the record, that it's 22.9 in this room and 45% humidity, and I tend to believe the humidity thing because I've been running a humidifier very close by. Now, uh, the readings over here seem to almost correlate with the temperature readings, but not the humidity readings. However, I'm not sure again of the accuracy of the clock on my wall, so I wouldn't go by that. But otherwise, as you can see, it runs as advertised, displaying the temperature and humidity. The AM2320 is a sensor that physically looks very similar to the DHT22, and it has similar specifications. The difference with this sensor is that it communicates on the I2C bus. The AM2320 is a temperature and humidity sensor. This device has an I2C interface with an address of hexadecimal 5C. It operates from 3.1 to 5.5 volts, making it ideal for both 3.3 and 5 volt logic circuitry. The AM2320 has a range of negative 40 to 80 degrees Celsius. The sensor has an accuracy of approximately 3%. Pin 1 of the AM2320 is the VDD, or voltage input pin. Pin 2 is SDA, or the data line for the I2C connection. Pin 3 is the ground. And pin 4 is SCL, which is the I2C clock. 
To use the AM2320 with an Arduino, you'll require a couple of pull-up resistors for the I2C lines. These can be any value from 2.2 to 10K. We'll start by connecting the 5 volt output of the Arduino to the VDD pin on the AM2320. This is pin number 1. Next, we'll connect the ground from the Arduino to pin 3 of the sensor. The analog input A4 is also the SDA line on the Arduino, and this is connected to pin 2 of the AM2320. Analog input S5 is the SCL line, and this is connected to pin 4 on the temperature sensor. Finally, you need to connect the two pull-up resistors from ground to the SDA and SCL lines. So now let's take a look at some code we can use with this sensor. To work with the AM2320, we'll also employ another Adafruit library. Go back into Sketch and go into Include Library and open your Library Manager. Now in the filter, type in AM2320 and press Enter. We're looking for the Adafruit AM2320 sensor library, which as you can see I've got installed. If you don't have it installed, you'll have a push button here, which you can use to install it. Once you've installed it, you can close the library manager. Again, we'll use one of the example sketches, so go into Examples, and go down to Examples from Custom Library, and Adafruit AM2320 sensor library. There's only one example, the basic AM2320. Now this is about as simple a sketch as you can possibly get. It includes the Unified Sensor Library and the 2320 library from Adafruit. Then it defines an object called AM2320. In the setup we set up the serial monitor and we print to the serial monitor. We also do a begin to initialize the AM2320. Notice that we don't use the wire library in this because the 2320 library takes care of the I2C connection. The loop is as simple as it gets. We simply print temp and then we go and do a read temperature from the AM2320 object. Humidity is done by a read humidity object. We delay for two seconds to allow the sensor to refresh and we do it over again. A very simple sketch, and let's take a look at it working now. Now here's our AM2320 in action, and by action of course I mean up on the serial monitor because otherwise it's just sitting here. I'm going to hit the reset just so we can start the sketch again, but all that really does is just print out the fact that this is the basic test. And it reads the temperature and humidity. Uh, the temperature in the room right now on the uncalibrated clock thermometer is 23.3, when this says 23.4, so they both seem to match pretty closely there, and again, my thing on the wall is still saying 45% humidity, and that says 40.7, so this may be more accurate, or it may be that it's just as close to the defects that the clock on my wall has. It's pretty hard to tell without a calibrated instrument, but it does seem to indeed report back temperature and humidity, and on both devices, the temperature was pretty closely related. The humidity is quite a bit off between this and the DHT22. Now the TMP36 and the LM35 are a bit different than the sensors we've looked at so far. For one thing, when you first glance at them, you would be forgiven for thinking they are transistors because they're in the familiar T092 package with three leads. But these are actually high precision temperature sensors that provide an analog output. So let's go and see how we can use these with our Arduino. The TMP36 and LM35 are both integrated circuit temperature sensors. These devices use calibrated analog outputs. The devices employ semiconductor temperature sensors for a high degree of accuracy. The analog outputs are linear representations of temperature. The TMP36 operates on a voltage range of 2.7 to 5.5 volts making it useful for a wide variety of microcontrollers. It has a temperature range of negative 40 to 125 degrees Celsius. Its accuracy is to within 2 degrees Celsius. It outputs 10 millivolts per degree Celsius in a linear output. 
The TMP36 has a 500 millivolt offset which allows for display of negative temperatures. The LM35 operates on a voltage range of 4 to 30 volts, so is only suitable for 5 volt microcontrollers. It has a wider temperature range of negative 55 to 150 degrees Celsius. It's also more accurate. It has an accuracy to within 0.5 of a degree Celsius. Like the TMP36, it outputs at 10 millivolts per degree Celsius. In order to represent negative temperature, the device needs to be biased with a negative supply voltage. The TMP36 and LM35 have the same pinout. Pin 1 is VCC, pin 2 is the output, and pin 3 is the ground. Here's how we're going to wire a TMP36 to an Arduino. I'm using this because I don't want to have to use a negative bias voltage. We'll connect the Arduino's 5 volt output to pin 1 of the TMP36. This is the VDD or voltage in pin. The Arduino's ground is connected to pin 3 of the TMP36. Analog input A0 is connected to the output pin or pin 2 of the TMP36. We will also connect the 3.3 volt output of the Arduino to the analog reference pin or the A ref pin. I'll explain the use of that as we look at the code for the TMP36. Now here's the sketch we're going to use to work with the TMP36. Now we start off with defining a variable called a ref voltage and defining its value as 3.3. This is the analog reference voltage. Now you recall we tied the 3.3 volt output of the Arduino to the a ref pin or analog reference pin on the Arduino. Now what does this do? Well, normally the analog to digital converter in the Arduino uses the supply voltage of 5 volts, and as it's a 10-bit converter, there are 1,024 individual steps that it can read between 0 and 5 volts. However, our sensor is never going to put out anywhere near 5 volts, so I've used the analog reference voltage to change the sensor to read between 0 and 3.3 volts, and that way we will get higher accuracy because now now we're defining 3.3 volts as being the top end, and we have 1,024 steps in there. Now you could even use an external precision reference to make this even better, and if you wanted to, you could take a multimeter and measure the actual voltage that you're getting on the analog reference and adjust this number accordingly. Next we define the pin that we are using for the TMP36 output, which is analog input A0. You could use one of the other analog inputs if you change this number. We'll also define a variable to read the temperature result itself, and we're calling that temp reading. Now in the setup we initialize our serial monitor, and we have to initialize the analog reference as being external, otherwise the Arduino will simply ignore the A ref and use the 5 volts. Then we go into the loop, and we assign temp reading the value of an analog read from temp pin, which of course is pin 0 in our case. Now this is going to give a value between 0 and 1024. We're going to print that to the serial monitor as being our raw input value. Then after that, we're going to convert that to the voltage. So we are going to use a float, and we're going to go to the temp reading multiplied by the analog reference voltage. And then we're going to define, divide that by 1024, because there are 1024 steps in the 10-bit converter. And that should give us a value of voltage. And we're going to print that out to the serial monitor. After this, we are going to print out the temperature. Now remember, it's 10 millivolts per degree Celsius, but there is a 500 millivolt offset. So in other words, what we need to do is we need to minus 500 millivolts from the result. And this is what we do over here to get the temperature in Celsius. Then we simply print that out to the serial monitor. We give a delay of one second for everything to stabilize and go through the loop again. So it's a fairly simple sketch. Let's go and take a look at the results now. 
Now here's our TMP36 temperature sensor experiment and as you can see it's reading the room temperature at about 21.54, 21.87 degrees Celsius for the reference my accurate wall clock which of course isn't that accurate it says 23 degrees mind you it's up on the wall and this is down on my workbench and this thing is fairly sensitive so I'm going to see how it responds to my body heat just by grabbing the tip of the sensor and it is going up indeed it's up at 25 now 26 27 I appear to be really hot stuff yeah it's peaking about 2799 or so and when I let go it should start to fall and it is falling as the heat dissipates off the sensor so it does seem to be fairly responsive as well and of course our serial monitor is also displaying the raw input and the voltage that we are measuring and you'll notice that the voltage is only about uh, a quarter of a volt and so we could actually have used a analog reference voltage much much lower than the 3.3 volts that was just there because it's convenient so if you have an accurate voltage source of about say a volt and a half that you could use you could probably get some very accurate or at least um, very high resolution measurements out of this sensor and so this would be a good sensor to use if you don't need humidity but you do want accuracy and high resolution now the final sensor that we're going to look at today is called an MCP9808 and I'm using a module from Adafruit to test this sensor. Now this sensor is a very high precision temperature sensor and it outputs on the I2C bus. The MCP9808 is a precision temperature sensor module. It has a range of negative 40 to 125 degrees Celsius. This is a high accuracy device with an accuracy within 0.25 of a degree Celsius. It operates on 2.7 to 5.5 volts, making it ideal for all sorts of microcontrollers and microcomputers. The MCP9808 interfaces using the I2C bus. The I2C address is selectable, allowing the integration into many different circuits. The module has internal 10K I2C pull-up resistors, so no external resistors are required. It also has a programmable alert output that can be set to trigger on a specific temperature. The VDD pin is the power input. GND, of course, is the ground. SCL is the I2C clock line, SDA the I2C data line. The alert output is an open collector output and will require a pull-up resistor for use. A0, A1, and A2 are the I2C address select lines and can be used to change the built-in I2C address. Hooking up the MCP9808 to an Arduino is very simple. The 5 volt output of the Arduino is connected to the VDD pin. The Arduino's ground is connected to the ground pin. Analog input A4 is connected to the SDA connection on the MCP9808. And finally, analog pin A5 is connected to the SCL connection. Now let's take a look at some code we can use with this device. Now to work with the MCP9808, once again we'll rely on one of Adafruit's libraries. So go up to Sketch and go to Include Library and Manage Libraries. Once your library manager is loaded, search for MCP9808. You will find the Adafruit MCP9808 library, which you can then install. Obviously I've installed mine already. And once you've done that, you can close the library manager. Once again, we'll go and run an example sketch. And there is one called MCP9808 test. Now it's a fairly simple sketch thanks to the power of the library. We include the wire library for I2C and we include the library we just installed. This does not use the unified sensor library like the other Adafruit examples. Then we create an object which we're calling temp sensor to represent the sensor itself. We set up our serial monitor at 9600 baud 
and then we go and begin the sensor and pass to it the I2C address. Now if you haven't connected anything to the A0, A1 or A2 pins then the address will be hexadecimal 18. However, you can bring those pins high and change the address and this table over here shows you how to do that. Now this can be useful if hexadecimal 18 conflicts with one of your existing I2C sensors or if you simply want to use more than one MCP9808 module on the same I2C bus. Then we go and we set the temperature sensor's resolution. The resolution can be defined as 0, 1, 2, or 3. Now, the higher the resolution, the longer it is going to take to get data. And we're going to use the highest resolution, which means it should be accurate to 0 0.0625 degrees Celsius. However, if less accuracy or less resolution is required, you can use one of the other numbers and get a much faster response. Now in the loop we wake up the temperature sensor. When it is asleep it consumes virtually no current. And it tells you over here what the current consumption is. Note that Adafruit has a little bit of an issue with spelling in this right now. Then we go and we print the resolution, which we do is get resolution to display. And then we go and get the temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit and assign it to two different floats. And we'll simply go out and print those two different floats. We delay for two seconds, then we print that we're going to shut down the sensor, and we do wake one, which will put it to sleep, and it will consume a very low amount of current. That's supposed to be microampere, by the way. And then we print a blank line, and then delay for 200 milliseconds, and then go back up and do the loop again. So as you can see, the sketch is very simple, thanks to the power of the library. Now let's go and see this high-resolution temperature sensor in action. And so for our final demo, the MCP9808, now this is supposed to be a very accurate temperature sensor, and so I'm going to believe its reading of 22.8125 degrees Celsius over my wall clock, which currently says 23.4 degrees. And of course, this device does not measure humidity. Now this is also displaying in Fahrenheit, so for those of you who've been confused through the entire video because you don't speak Celsius, well, there you go, the result in Fahrenheit. And of course, of course, you can take any of the previous sketches and just take the Celsius result, multiply it by 1.8 and add 32 and you will have the results in Fahrenheit. So that's your homework for the day. Now let's try the same finger test I tried with the TMP36. I'm just going to put my finger on top of the sensor, which is the small chip in the middle of this. And as you can see, it's immediately going up. I'm 26.75, 27 degrees over here. 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it does indeed seem to be very responsive and very quick. Now we're in mode 3, which is the highest resolution mode, and that refreshes every 250 milliseconds. You can refresh quicker if you would like a lower resolution mode and just not have as many digits after the decimal point. And so if you want the most accurate temperature measurement and a lot of extra features like the alert, then the MCP9808 is probably the best choice for your project. Now as you can see, all of these temperature sensors have their own advantages and disadvantages, and I'm sure that among them you'll find one that's ideal for your project. They're all very simple to use, and they're all quite inexpensive. Now if you'd like more information about these temperature sensors or any of the code that I used today, check out the article on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. You'll find the link to that article right below the video. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please do me the honor and do that. I would very much appreciate it. And when you do hit the subscribe button, make certain to also click on the bell notification, and that way you'll be notified every time that I make new videos. If you want to discuss these temperature sensors further, or if you'd like to suggest some content for future videos, the place to go is the DroneBot Workshop forums, and you'll find the link to the forums below these videos. And the final link that you'll find is the link to join the newsletter. The newsletter is something I send out every two weeks to let you know what's going on here in the workshop. So until we meet next time, please take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you again very soon here in the DroneBot Workshop. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.